Welcome to the last proper tutorial in RPG Maker. I'm just going to quickly show you variables. And the main reason I want to do this is because variables seem very scary. And you're like, what are variables? Ah, if, if you've never done programming, they're amazing. They can do so many things. Let's say we want to punch this trash can and keep track of how many times we punched it. We can do that. So trash. And just like before, we're going to do this only if the player is facing up. Okay, so if we double click in here, you punched the trash can. And before that, show animation. At this event, um, so these are the different things that you can do and you can also do them on the map. But we'll just stick with hit physical just like whoosh. okay so over here in variable check this box and you see this huge list of nothing you can name each one of these whatever you want so we're going to name this trash punches try to name everything so that you know what it is in the future in case you ever forget okay we actually don't need it here so we're going to uncheck that but now that variable exists so if you go here and uh, control variables. So we're going to add one to trash punches. Now we have absolutely no way of checking this, but there's a little secret that I know. Uh, let's put, uh, I don't know, something over here, just a box. Trash punch check. So this is another event. Now what we do here is we're gonna show text and say, you've punched the trash can this many times. Now, here's a, a little code backslash V, and then in the brackets, 0001 times. Now, what this is, is this is simply going to display the number of that variable. And the reason it's 001 is because that's the name of the variable, 001. So if you were doing like this one, you put 0010 in that box. And um, that's it. So uh, if you want to control variables, you can do that. And you can use this to control all sorts of stuff. This is just a really crude example of it. But let's see, if we go to it right now, you've punched a tra trash can zero times. Now if we come here, you punch trash can three, four, five. Check it, punch a trash can five times. Punch it one more time for good measure so it knows its place. You've punched it six times. Now, this is how you can keep track of all sorts of stuff. So let's say you have a door that requires four keys. You can have a variable for that door that checks how many keys have been put in before it will unlock. Uh, you can use it for relationship meters. You can use it for all sorts of stuff. It's, it's really up to you and that's where game design is gonna really play a hand, but I know that's a little more advanced, which is why I'm stopping at this uh, tutorial. I just wanted to show you an example of what variables are. And I know some of you are going to be like, oh, no, I don't want to touch that. And some of you are going to go, ooh, that's fun. I can work with that. So this is the end. Uh, I was going to do a separate video, but I'll just go into, I've got some tips for making good RPG Maker games. Um, try to make a very short game to start out with just to get your, your hands dirty. And I would encourage you to do a fan game, your favorite cartoon, TV show, book, whatever. That way you don't have to think about characters or story. It's already in, in existence. Um, also study other RPG maker games or just RPGs or just games in general that you wanna make. And you'd be surprised how much you can convert game ideas into RPG maker format. Um, as I said before, Custom art makes all the difference. Custom art, custom music, custom sound effects. You can also buy them. Um, Itch.io is a great resource. I buy so many things off of there, and they just make your games look so much better than what you're seeing normally. If your game looks like RPG Maker, it will scare people away. They will not want to play it. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. So if you're making games just for fun and they're for free or for your friends, then that's that's totally fine. Don't worry about it. But if you're actually trying to sell a game and make money, you should very, very much invest uh, your time and money into that.
There are tons of channels about learning how to do pixel art on YouTube if you want to make your own art. I'm still learning how to make pixel art, so I can't really give a tutorial on that. I suck. <laughs> your story and characters are going to make or break your game. And there's a there's someone on Reddit that said something that's still with me to this day. I saw it not too long ago, but they said, Chrono Trigger doesn't really have that great of a story, but the storytelling is very good. And I think that's very, very uh, poignant. Try to avoid overdone tropes in JRPG games, like, you know, your mom waking you up at the beginning and telling you you have to go save the world, like, you know, or like, oh, we have to go get the crystal. Like, don't, like, that's been done to death. Do your own thing. And remember, the bigger your game gets, the more you have to manage everything, and it be it can become a mess. Trust me, I've, I've had so many projects I had to just scrap and start over because I just lost count of everything. So keep track of stuff, but again, try to start with small games. I would much rather play a shorter, good game than a long, drawn-out one that doesn't need to be long. So try to avoid like backtracking and, and all that stuff, because nobody likes to do that. If your game is only 30 minutes long, your game's only 30 minutes long. And also, most importantly, don't expect your first game to be your best one. Have patience, and most importantly, have fun. I've shown you everything you need to get started in making your own RPG Maker games. I hope it helps, and in case there's anything that I didn't cover or something else you'd like to know, um, please uh, leave it in the comments, and I will do my best to show what I can. Uh, I'm not like a super professional in this. I've just been using it long enough that I felt qualified to show people what I've learned. But thank you so much for watching this series, if you did watch it all the way through. And um, I do want to do more like Unreal Engine and more advanced tutorials in the future, but I know there's a lot of beginning game devs out there who don't know where to start, and I figured this would be a good resource. So thank you so much, and if you'd like more tutorials, please like and subscribe and all that YouTuber nonsense. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys when I do the next video on this channel. Have a great day. Bye-bye.